So let's talk a little bit more on chemist and the chemical engineer. So these are general generalizations. We're going to talk about the chemical engineer and what they're interested, especially what there's what's their focus. So you will be well if you study this, you will see a lot of caustic material and acids uh, such as hydrogen chloride, sulfuric acid, and caustic soda and many of that you want to do these in huge scales because those are very let's say acids and bases that are very commodity so they are very cheap and we need them a lot we need acids to decrease pH and uh, we need base to increase the pH right here so we need that a lot of course you will see and understand that oil and gas and anything related to those products such as distillates, natural gas, methane, liquefied petroleum gases, kerosene, jet fuel, asphalt, gasoline, all that. Well, you need a chemical engineer working on those distillation columns, separation processes, pressurization, storage, and so on. They also are into building materials such as maybe cement or this guy right here, which is sodium carbonate and... Uh, calcium carbonate, there are plenty of building materials, glass, pyrex, paper and pulp products, well, you know, paper is very important, but pulp, maybe you don't have idea, but there's many material that goes into packages, and these are pulp related. Also food, guys, I would say food is one of the huge industries, and will be, of course, the last industry to die before this food, we need food everywhere, and we need chemistry, and we need mass production of food and then plastics and polymers we understand that they come from the oil and gas but i will also say that there are plenty that they do not come from here especially those of bio resources so we are interested in making those in huge scales so textiles you know clothing or even i used to work in this place which we make uh, safety belts in the car so that is of course not clothing, but it's a textile. You need a very high performance textile. It needs to be soft, but yet strong. Coatings and dye, well, coating sounds very fancy, but they, this is actually paints and dyes, maybe even also once again, the application. We did this and it was white, but they used to dye it or color it into a gray. And of course, when you buy a car, you don't want to see a stain in your new car, so you need to have a lot of engineering behind that, understand the dyings, temperatures, pressures, times, and so on. Pharmaceutics, well, all the medicines are chemistry related, and you want to have very, if you are doing aspirin, well, you know aspirin is a huge medicine, or it consumes it a lot, so we need to produce a huge amount of pharmaceuticals. Soaps and detergent in order to clean stuff, fertilizers and agrochemicals, once again, for the food industry, we need raw materials, Let's say we we also need uh, maybe floor. We need also food, uh, fruits, vegetables, and so on. Also, care products, personal care products, and retail, such as batteries. Maybe all the little cells right here. All the Procter and Gamble products you can imagine, uh, Scotch. Uh, I, I cannot even imagine. There are plenty of them. Personal care. There are makeups, there are creams, whatever you can imagine for your personal care, and metals, metallurgy, steel, galvanization, even precious metals, whatever industry you can get, you are interested in that. And there's also very fine chemistry such as catalyst and other very fine or specific chemist, uh, chem chemicals, so it maybe, I don't know, you are doing a catalyst, because that catalyst is used in the just seal example, polyester. So you want that catalyst to go to all the polyester producers. And very important, and not least, water treatment and the environment. Maybe taking out SO2 from the air, NO2 from the air, all that is also very chemical engineering related. Now, what's the chemist interested in? Well, he's interested in, in testing products, maybe he wants to know if beer has the correct amount of alcohol 
analytical tests of chemical species, maybe, and this is very common, you go with this water, industrial residue, and you take him to this guy right here, and you ask him, please, I just want to know if this is correct norm, let's say, if you're in Germany, you will say the DIN, the standardization, is it okay? in order to take it for the river, because if not, I will need to pay extra money to dispose it. Nanotechnology is a very it's trending right now. Nanotechnology is essentially all that small material that you cannot see, but you can design, and awesome things are going to happen, especially for the mobile and computer industry. Once again, fine chemistry, as you know, guys, if the more specific you want to go, so, for example, high-performance materials, the more research and development you need to do. And those guys need to know about chemistry and their understanding of materials. There's also a little bit on biotechnology. Let's say we use bio stuff such as enzymes and catalysts and biomedicine and so on. Once again, we need to produce new pharmaceuticals. We want to live longer, paying cheaper uh, medicines. New food chemicals, yes, one thing is not with the chemicals right now, but you want to make new researches, so maybe, I don't know, uh, increase the time life of meat by adding a very healthy material that will not cause you any cancer or whatever uh, health issue you may have in the future. And also there are plenty, once again, biotechnology, but more into biology. We are talking now about genetics, DNA, neurology, anything related to biologic approaches or applications, chemists can do it also. So I'm pretty sure there are plenty of more, but those are the typical ones, the ones that you are going to probably encounter in your life. So once again, guys, we're chemical, uh, the chemistry, the chemists are interested in the theory behind how it works, making new materials, and of course you need to know about how they interact between each other. The chemical engineer is more about, I'm interested in, interested in this product, how do I get from reactants to product with the cheapest, least time if possible, safety, environmental friendly, and so on. So this is very cool guys, I was literally going in the car with one of my best friends, a friend of mine, he's a chemist, I'm a chemical engineer, and we're talking about PPM, PPB, which are parts per million, parts per billion. It's a measure of concentration. Imagine you have one million parts, let's say, atoms. And when I talk about parts per million, it's literally one part per a million of these guys right here. So the good thing is that we were talking about this, and he was telling me about his thesis about PPMs. And me personally when I think about PPMs is how many grams per ton you are getting so this is typical for gold and so on and this or my friend the chemist was talking to me about milligrams per liter and you can see even though we have the same ratio we have these right here we were I was thinking in tons which are about 1000 kilograms or about two two zero pounds and this guy was talking about milligrams per liter, which is very small amount. So that's funny that even though we are relating to the same amount of concentration, each one of them has different units. So for instance, an engineer will be more interested in tons, cubic meters, meters, days, years, whatever unit you can imagine are, let's say, of huge amounts. Now the chemist is interested in very small amounts such as grams, micrograms, milliliters, centimeters, seconds, or even minutes. So that's kind of you can say. These guys are in the large scale. Oops. Large scale, and these guys right here are in the low scale. And of course, they can go even lower to nanotechnology, microbiology, and all that. Now let's continue. I think I already mentioned this, but we're talking about economy, which is money and technical stuff. Can we do it or not? So we, as chemical engineers, we want to make the fastest money. We want to make the return on investment the, uh, the fastest. So you want maybe 
In two years, you will get back your money from building, designing, and operating this uh, new idea. So that means that this is economic possibility. Like in two years, or maybe five years, you will get your money. And guys, if you go to investors, they will not accept anything that goes beyond 10 years of return. They also are interested in safe and environment and to be in a friendly workplace. So who doesn't love to be in a safe place where you know that nothing is going to happen or maybe if something happens, you will have a backup plan. And once again, you want to make it profitable, not only, let's say, the return on the investment. We want it in a very short time, but we want this to be, I don't know, maybe 10 or even 20 years making you money and money and money. So this is true, especially for all those old refineries, which they still operate because petroleum, well, the price goes up and yeah, you get money and money and it's very hard to not gain money of the refinery. Now the chemist, he is mostly interested into new products, making it, if possible, technically, you want to be able to say to your boss or to your chief that you can do it, even though it's a little bit expensive, you can do it. And you want to do it because you want to see if it's possible to make it on large scale, which you will see eventually that you need to talk with the engineer. They want to learn more about the chemistry and the science behind that, which means that they will do plenty of experiments because you cannot find chemistry in the books. In the books, you have the basics, but if you want something about, I don't know, let's say see uh, this example, you want to see how it reacts neuro cells with a new chemical catalyst. Maybe they get better along and you produce a new neurotransmitter that will help you to decrease, I don't know, hangover. Well, of course you will, you can make this possible and you want to be able to understand it. Once you understand it, you can even sell it and get a lot of money. So that's what I wanted to show you. Now in the next video, we're going to talk about the syllabus and courses we take, I mean, chemists and chemical engineers.